So uh, module frontiers. Uh, there's some exciting things that have happened for JavaScript modules lately, and so I want to touch on those things, but then also talk about how we can uh, prepare for that future and uh, even help uh, improve it. So uh, uh, first, this is just my opinion. I'm not on TC39. Uh, I, I work at Mozilla, but I'm not speaking for Mozilla. Modules are just my side passion. Uh, it's mostly uh, come out of uh, writing Require.js and um, uh, <coughs> working in the AMD community. So first, there's the, 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 the known lands. Um, for ECMAScript 6, uh, they have new syntax for declaring modules and then a, a module loader API to then load those modules. And uh, you can see here, it's okay, I'm not gonna go through the specific uh, parts of the, of, of the, of the syntax, uh, but this is just to give you a reference. If you're familiar with an existing uh, module system, this kind of helps you map to, to what it might look like in ECMAScript uh, six modules. Um, but one thing to notice about the syntax is even though it, it may look similar to um, what you might see in an existing module system, the, uh, uh, one of the big differences is that the import and export um, syntax is, is dealing with something called like a mutable slot. So you can get a reference to the module export, but that the value of that can change um, over time and you don't have to get a new reference. And this is really to help uh, cycle support. So they have really good circular dependency support. And so I think that fixes one of the uh, weaknesses of AMD. And uh, <coughs> that's also in uh, common JS, but, um, but not, not so much, it's, it's a little worse in AMD. Um, and then I think the, the other thing is it, it codifies a way to do dynamic uh, imports. Uh, you can see that the, the bottom call here is uh, for system.import. And uh, the important thing with that is it, it, it mandates a, a, a callback because you don't know, uh, particularly in the browser, if, it's, if that uh, dynamic import is gonna be available right away. And so uh, the system.import, that gets into the, uh, the module loader. Um, the, uh, the module loader is, is responsible for, for loading the modules in. And uh, <clears throat> when it's loading in those modules, it goes through uh, a, a few different steps. And the, the loader API is extensible enough that you can override uh, or modify uh, th those steps. And so you, you can see here with the, with the system calls, uh, system.normalize, uh, these are all functions that you can override. Uh, so system.normalize, that uh, converts, say, like a uh, uh, relative ID into a, a normalized absolute ID. And then locate takes that ID, and you can turn that into a, a URL. Uh, fetch then gets the source of that URL, translate, um, you have an opportunity to, to modify the source to turn it into JavaScript. So the, the default loader, this will do nothing, but if, you, if you're working with something like uh, TypeScript or CoffeeScript, uh, this is where you, you might plug in to do that, that translation. Uh, and then there's system.instantiate, uh, that's uh, more for uh, bootstrapping older sort of module code into the ES6 module system. So, for example, a, a future AMD loader that is trying to bridge a gap might over, uh, override that. And so if you're familiar with uh, AMD loader plugins, um, they, they have a, a similar sort of uh, uh, life cycle, but it's, it's, it's a little more coarse. They just have a normalize and a load, and the load is responsible for doing those other steps. Uh, and then the AMD uh, loader plugins, they also have a declarative syntax in, in the, you know, in the re require call, um, where the module loader system for ECMAScript is more imperative. And, uh, and so it, that's sort of where the state of uh, the ECMAScript uh, uh, parts uh, for the spec are at. And uh, uh, you, you might be able to tell that, uh, particularly for the uh, module loader API, it's very like low level, uh, which is great. It, it gives people a lot of room to experiment. Um, but there are some decisions, I think, like JavaScript environments like the browser or Node or uh, even Rhino or, or Nashorn maybe, um, that, that they, they can make and, and sort of provide some functionality on top of the base uh, module loader API. Uh, uh, that, that might help developers. And then there are things that we can do in our own apps um, uh, to prepare for that future. So for JavaScript environments, uh, I'm also gonna talk about the browsers here because I think that's the, the most uh, sensitive to 
uh, I/O constraints, um, and, and it has more variability in, in project setup. Uh, but uh, for all of these improvements, uh, you, the browser makers will be involved with that, but it's also about us uh, interacting with them and letting them know what we want, uh, and then helping them work with tests and, and sort of thing. Uh, so it's a, it's a cooperative effort. And so uh, one of those things that uh, the JavaScript environment can decide to layer on top of the base module order API uh, is how to do ID normalization. Um, so I think CommonJS set a really good standard here for uh, uh, relative requires, that's turned out to be really useful. Node uses it, uh, AMD uses it. I think it makes sense to just have that as, as a default, uh, uh, the default normalization hook. Um, for require.js, uh, we allow uh, URLs uh, as for a dependency string IDs, as well as module IDs. And uh, I think that's been nice if you've just had a, just a small analytics uh, library that you wanted to load into the page. You didn't have to set up a, uh, some sort of config to point to that, but I think for some people seeing a URL in there along with the module ID, they may think the module ID is a URL and they're not really, so it may make sense to, to not allow URLs and you know, require a, 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 a path mapping for that. Uh, and I'd, I'd like to see a loader plugin syntax like the kind that we have uh, in AMD loaders. Uh, I think it's really helpful to uh, have some system to uh, sort of multiplex or weave multiple uh, loader hooks in together because the, uh, the the base system in, in the ECMAScript loader uh, spec right now is uh, it's very imperative uh, it's just the function override and I think once you have a, a couple of uh, different kinds of plugins like here this is like a text uh, an example of a text plugin resource it's nice to have some, uh, have that wiring done automatically for you. And this also allows you to delay loading of those hooks until they're actually needed. There's also a declarative loader config. So uh, as I mentioned before, with the, the S loader spec, it's, it is very imperative. You, you use uh, function overrides. I think for most people, it's nice just to have a declarative way to specify some configuration. And uh, I think AMD has a really nice set uh, to start with, I would suggest looking at that. E even if you don't, if you want maybe a different syntax on top of that, I think the problems it's trying to solve, uh, they're, they're real world problems and they came up in, in actual use. So uh, I think those are, they're, that's a, a good um, problem space uh, to address. Uh, in, uh, in AMD, it's like the paths, map, and module config parts uh, of that declarative config. Uh, I'm hoping we can avoid packages config by using uh, the, the layout convention I'm gonna mention a little later. And then there's, there's shim config for being able to load a legacy code that doesn't call a module system by basically in the configuration you specify the dependencies and the export. I would hope that this goes away <laughs> at some point, but uh, maybe not. Uh, and, and we might need it for, for uh, uh, at least this trans transition period. Uh, the other thing that's not specified yet um, is inline module syntax, something like this module string ID and uh, then the, the braces and then the module body. Uh, that's really useful for concatenation purposes, but it's also nice sometimes you have a config and then you would just have a dynamic test and you set up a, uh, a named module based on the environment and then you start your, your main loading. It's also useful in, in mocks, uh, like small test mocks, but um, so uh, that may come, yeah, uh, but it, it needs a little bit more time to, to, to bake. There's, uh, there's a higher bar to, to meet with the, with the syntax. There's a, a discussion of what, are the, is that a lexical uh, sort of form? Uh, are they lexical modules? Um, I, I prefer a, a logical module form, but, uh, but we'll see how that goes. But in, in the meantime, there, these are some things that might help uh, with that. Uh, for uh, in HTML, there's been talk of having a module tag or a script type module so that you can have a few of those in an, an HTML page. Uh, <clears throat> for me though, once I have JavaScript to define and load modules, I don't wanna leave JavaScript, I don't wanna go out to HTML, but this might be needed for some other uh, um, spec, uh, like script terminal uh, points, uh, but I'm, I'm hoping uh, I can avoid that one, but uh, you might see that one come up. Uh, there's also talk of like a zip or an archive URL. This is a, um, uh, 
a way to reference resources within a, script, a zip file or, or like a specialized bundle file. Uh, for me, this, this might be useful like behind the scenes, in, since particularly for, for JavaScript, since we have module IDs that have a chance to get transformed via indirection to a path. Um, but I think for normal source authoring, in going from source to build, I'm, I'm not sure that, uh, I think there's still some things to work out there. And there's also talk of on the ES loaders, uh, having a loader.define where you pass it the string ID, and then just passing the, a JavaScript string of the module uh, as the second argument. This, that might be like just a stopgap while we work out the, the, other, the other stuff, but um, so th those are options to, to help uh, with the bundling parts. Then there's, our, then our <coughs> there's things that we can do in our apps, uh, like how do we bridge our, our existing code with ES6 code? How, how should we lay out projects that work well with that system, and what can pa package managers do to help us? So uh, if you're in the AMD world, if you want to go from ES6 to AMD, there's this uh, ES6 module transpiler uh, that allows you to you know, write, in, write in ES6 modules, and then you can output to, to AMD. Uh, but just be, be aware that for me personally, until browsers ship with a, an implementation, you, uh, always be aware that you might have to go back through and um, modify your source to, to meet the latest spec. But, but it's a good way to sort of get your, your feet wet if you like. Going from AMD to ESX, that's going to be a, uh, a pretty easy transform to do. Uh, I, I see the AMD semantic model fitting as a sort of a subset of the ESX one. So it's, it'll be really easy to up, uh, up convert. And something I, I'm interested in exploring uh, is, is a bootstrap loader that sits on top of the ECMAScript loader API that provides the uh, uh, declarative AMD style config, uh, make sure to have the, the, the loader plugin support to multiplex those uh, 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 the plugin hooks, the, the loader hooks, and then uh, uh, an adapter that understands the, the AMD syntax and just uh, shoves that into the ES6 loader. In the node world, you can use the module transpiler. Again, it has an, an option to go to uh, common JS format. So uh, that works if you want to go ES6 back to node. Uh, and then as the, the loader spec gets into V8, uh, node itself can just use the, the loader hooks to, uh, and override those to, to map back to how they handle modules now and how to import their, their traditional uh, syntax into the, uh, the ES6 module loader. So for project layout, I think this is one of the biggest things to take away uh, from today. If we can get used to laying out our modules in the, this base URL module ID.js format, uh, that'll help a lot. So uh, because that means you, you will avoid uh, having to specify a configuration, basically. I think one of the issues with that people feel when they come to require JS uh, is like, oh, they see some examples and they see these giant config blocks and that uh, I don't like that either. Uh, but there's, there's if you, if you follow the, the loading conventions, this, this one in particular, then uh, you avoid a lot of config, and it'll work well in the uh, um, ECMAScript six world too. And so this, this kind of shows how that convention might work. Uh, this is using AMD syntax, but it, you can imagine how this would work in, in, in the ES6 module loader. Uh, those, uh, the ES module loader has a, a, a base URL that you can set on it uh, already. And then if we work out declarative config, here you just set up one config for the app, for your app code, and then the, the lib directory is where your, your package manager would install all, all of your dependencies. Uh, like in a node world, that would be node modules. Um, and so then you set up that small config, you do the require for app slash main, and then that's it. You don't have to touch the config anymore. Um, and then if app main had a, a, a de dependency on an app, like an app view file, it could just use relative IDs, that's dot slash view, and that's normalized to app slash view. And so, uh, so then uh, package managers can help us get to this base URL module ID.js sort of layout. Uh, and there's a couple things they can do uh, to do that. One of them is if it's a, if it's a package that is just one single file uh, JS file, just install that at that location. 
if it needs, if the package manager needs to track metadata about it, it can do that. You can use the project's package JSON for that, or, or use the, like, you know, a separate metadata directory. There's other ways to, to deal with that uh, problem, but I think the important thing is to, to favor uh, runtime uh, constraints over the package manager constraints, uh, you know, something that may be the cleanest for a package manager, uh, because the package manager has enough resources to, to look in a few places. Um, but even in that model, you could have some dependencies that are uh, a, a collection of things. Like you might have a, a JavaScript module, a, a CSS file, maybe a few JS modules within that package. And that still works with the system. Uh, all the package manager has to do is when it installs that, that package, call it X, uh, when it installs that X directory, just create an X.js as a sibling to there that just uh, requires, or uh, in the case of ES6, uh, imports from, the, uh, uh, from the, ma the main module location. And, and then that all still works. And yeah, for package managers, a, a couple of other small things. Uh, the, uh, uh, it's, it's nice to have a difference between the, the repo name for the dependency and what the local name is. For front-end code in particular, we have a few modules that uh, can provide the same uh, API or similar API. And, you know, depending on the project, they may want to choose, uh, in this example, like underscore or low, da low dash. Uh, so if, I, if I choose low dash in my project uh, and I use a dependency that uses underscore, I should be able to uh, either inst install uh, low dash as underscore or have a, a map config. Um, that, that's something in, in AMD, uh, um, config already that's available. If you have something similar, be able to write that out to handle that. So uh, that, those are the, the, the big points uh, I, I want to uh, impart here. The, uh, the ES6 uh, module specs are, are looking really good. Uh, the, the declarative spec is, is, I think, is fairly stable now for defining modules. The module loader API is a little newer. And so they just uh, talked about this and uh, put in the, the first run of it in the, in the latest uh, spec after the, the latest TC39 meeting. And, and I think that's looking good too. The nice thing is they, uh, they're, they're doing a, a prototype of the, of the API you know, with, a, with an implementation to prove out that the spec you know, makes sense. And I think that's a great idea. Um, but I think above that base stuff, the, the declarative config, inlining, and uh, loader plugins are, would be a great thing to add on top of that. And then for, for everyone else in our code today, we can start doing this base URL module ID JS. Um, for existing package managers, you, you can already start today. If, if you have users of, of your package manager that uses AMD code, this will, you, you already have a, a test case uh, where, where you can run this. And uh, if you want to get the slides, uh, they're right there. So thank you very much.